Hello, everybody, and welcome to Question and Answer Podcast, live from Zagreb, the capital of Croatia. If you guys were uh, watching us last week, you remember that uh, you'll, you'll be able to recognize these two gentlemen. They were on with me last week. This is David. Uh, who runs uh, all things Project Life, having to deal with uh, orphan children, Roma Gypsy children, Croatian children. This is uh, Yosef, uh, who deals with all things outreach, right? Uh, if you have been able to follow us on any f- platform of social media, you do realize that that's not because of me, because I don't know anything about social media. <laughs> um, if it was up to me, I'd still use a, uh, uh, what kind of phone did I used to use that you guys made fun Nokia. of? The, 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 uh, the regular one. The regular, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would actually use the rotor phone. But anyway, <laughs> Yo- Yosef's the one who is able to uh, get all that stuff up onto uh, social media and respond to people and all that. So um, we are in... Zagreb, Croatia, as opposed to you and I, yesterday did a podcast from the Roma Village. Roma Ternovic. Gypsy Village, huh? In Ternovic, yes. In Ternovic, that was great. And uh, if our voices are a little bit, uh, what, froggy? It's still early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 9 a.m. here in Croatia. Well, now, what was our schedule yesterday? Well, it was a 13 hours long day. So, 13 yes. hours? Yes, we had a long day. What time did we get home last night? Around 9.30, 10. What time did we start? 9. 9 a.m. From, so from 9 to 9, 9.30, and here we are at 9. So it was interesting. I was, um, uh, you didn't see when we did the, pro- the podcast. You were with the kids, right, no. doing a Bible study, and you weren't there. How <laughs> funny, right? We're in calm Zagreb right now. Yesterday in the Gypsy Village, right? You know, we're doing the podcast and, you know, uh, I can hear people behind me. You know, they're all coming and trying to look at the camera and everything. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there were some unf- there were some people, I guess, who had been thirsty yesterday. Right. So they imbibed um, uh-huh. a lot of alcohol. <laughs> so it, it was their day, uh, their day for social. Oh, they got, is that what it was? Yes, they got the social. The 1920 something. Aha. Uh-huh. So. so they got their money from the government. Okay. Based upon the amount of children they have and all that stuff. <laughs> so they went and spent. So I was wondering why it was crazy yesterday. Right. So we're doing the podcast and I can just hear people behind and there's music going on. And there was a rooster that just kept, <laughs> I don't know. What's the word I want to use roosting. I don't know what a rooster does. <laughs> and um, all of a sudden, you know, we're having the podcast, you know, and uh, and he was in love. There were two, <laughs> out of whatever. There was a rooster and a chicken, and all of a sudden, you know, they <laughs> right there in front of me. I'm, we're doing the podcast. I look. I'm like, whoa! And uh, wow. as the our one Roma guy Vin said. They're making eggs. <laughs> so, oh, so. <laughs> so next time when we take, we will know how. Yeah. So that was. Uh, <laughs> so this is nice and calm here. We're indoors. Uh, you know, it's, there, there is no shy in Aroma Village. No, so. no shame. No shame. 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 Right. Yeah. They are. They are not shy about it. Yeah. And um, so there was a, a lady. You had set up a, a meeting for me to be able to uh, just meet with her because uh, her granddaughter. Uh, it was thought uh, just young baby, right? Yeah. How many how many months old? Uh, probably six months. Six months. They thought she had leukemia, and uh, you know, so David set it up for me to go meet with her, and uh, so uh, we went to a place outside of private private place in Med, and she had her one baby, and we we're talking about her granddaughter with leukemia. Praise God, it was discovered. It's not leukemia. There's Oof. an infection in the blood. The baby is in the hospital and is going to have to have blood transfusion, but the doctors seem to believe that, you know, the baby will be okay. So mm-hmm. praise God for that. What's the point? So, you know, I do a podcast and I got chickens making eggs, right? Or rooster and chicken making eggs, right? And then I, I go and, you know, I'm counseling this lady and she tells me the good news. And, and as she's talking to me, she's got her baby. And all of a sudden, the, refrigerator. the baby's looking for milk, right? <laughs> and opens the refrigerator. So I'm talking. I look, okay, we got that going on. So, yeah. 
right here he's there. nice. Here he's nice. Yeah, so it's calm here right now in Zagreb. Yeah. But did you guys notice the weather change? Like from yesterday to today? From it's cold. from high summer to to winter. <laughs> but literally yesterday was high summer. Yeah. It was yeah. so hot in the village. And today, this morning, I woke up. I'm like, man, what happened here? Change. It is uh, fall has come upon us here, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do ministry in a crazy country. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a blast, isn't it? Yes. It's yeah. crazy. Like nothing in the sense, you know, the people. Positive. Are crazy, but all right, real quick nice before, before we get to the question, how are you guys doing on your Greek and Hebrew seminary? <sighs> Good. <laughs> Studying a lot. I know you guys a are. Lot. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. You're taking the exam is good. I mean, for now, really good. Good, good. Yeah. Well, for everything, uh, we need to put an amount of work and uh, to be faithful. And that's it. Nothing will come uh, accidentally. Right. Everything is hard work. There you go. And God will bless that. Yep. Well, you're seeking to uh, become workman approved, right? Mm. Before God, who can correctly handle the word of truth. And... The closer you can get to the original, the more you can understand the original. Um, obviously, the better you're going to be able to interpret the scriptures. You're going to understand what God meant by what God said. So it, this, even though I know it's frustrating, it's tough for you guys to do this. Um, you know, every day I come down from my study time and I go into the learning center to check on everybody, all the students, and they're in there busily, you know, doing their thing. I know day on behind, behind the mic, uh, you were, what, 2.30 in the morning the other day you were up studying, huh? Yes. yes. <laughs> so, that's why you're sleeping right now behind the, the camera. Yes. Right? But so it's we'll worth it, guys. Again, you know, what you're doing, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So yes. just keep doing it. Keep grinding. Um, I know at times you will feel like, ah, is this worth it? Or am I ever going to use this stuff? Listen, you will use yes. it. Okay? You will use it. So. The more you can get the understanding of the grammar and the different nuances in the two languages. Um, I, I mean, I use Greek and Hebrew every day of my life. Mm. I'm studying it. So, and using it when I'm uh, put, putting the other messages. When we master the language, we can do one podcast on Greek or Hebrew. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go. Malku, put the microphone All right. All right. So... All right, is he loud enough for you, Dayon? Okay. okay, good now. All right, good. Okay, so uh, that's it. So we discovered that we had an interesting time in the Romy village yesterday. Praise God, again, um, the baby does not have leukemia. Mm. And praise God, the other baby is filled with milk, right? <laughs> um, we discovered that the weather changed here this morning. Uh, and we are ready. And we also discovered you guys are surviving in seminary, huh? Yes. You're down to the yeah. last last classes. Good. Okay, should we start with a question? Yes. All right, what is the question? The first question. Well, first question. I think you probably want to hit it the other way, don't you? There you go. Too much studying of Greek and Hebrew, right? <laughs> Again, that was the commercial. I did such a yeah, I did such a great job setting you up and saying how you were the social media guru and this and that, and you don't know how to use the clicker. I have to yeah. tell you, it's new, so you know. Yeah, actually, it is a new. Right? So, the first question: Is it arrogant to have the assurance of salvation? Wow, is it arrogant to have assurance of salvation? Is it arrogant to have the assurance of salvation? I know what we're going to answer. Let, let me start with this. Um, actually, I'll start with you. Okay. You were brought up in the Methodist Church. Well, not exactly. Not in the teachings of the Methodist Church. Okay. Uh, the place where I grew up, you know, the only churches both that they have, the evangelical churches, like the Methodist Church, and they have the Orthodox one. Okay, so and you had so, Methodist Orthodox, yes. so you were not part of the Orthodox, yes. so you were part of the Evangelical Methodist. Yes. So, what what did they teach you growing up that and when it came to salvation? They were teaching us more about uh, stories from the Bible, but basically their teaching is you can choose God. Okay, so they're yeah. Arminists, that you have the ability as a fallen person to make the choice for so God yes to or God. to reject God. Yes. Okay. Yes. But the good part of it, I was blessed. Let, let, let me clarify. I'm sorry. Okay. That you have the choice prior to being regenerated. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so to choose God or reject God. People, this is what they say. Basically, yeah, people are preaching to you and they're saying you should repent and it's up to you now. It's up to you. It's so to they you. say that um, repentance mm. precedes regeneration. Mm -hmm. They say that your repentance is the cause of your regeneration. Okay, which obviously is not biblical. Why? Because we cannot uh, repent without first renewing because we are spiritually dead. Right. How, how can uh, uh, spiritually dead person repent? Right. He thinks that he's right. Actually, he enjoys in that state. He don't want, he don't want to, to, to change. And he thinks that he's okay. Right. So what we teach, what the Bible teaches, is that regeneration yes. precedes yes. repentance. You're first regenerated by God, the Holy Spirit. Now you're made alive. You're given the gift of faith to be able to repent and place your trust in Christ, right? Yes. So that's not what you were taught. No, I was blessed to grow up in a Christian family where uh, I saw my parents both teaching me the Bible and also my grandfather, you Great. know, with the Bible. So I was taught from a young age, you know, seeing people and examples, you know, focusing on what God's Word says. Which is amazing when I hear this because, again, both your parents and grandfather were brought up during the time of communism, socialism. Mm. So that's amazing. Well, again, God has his elect everywhere, right? Yes. Good. Okay, so you were taught that, again, your repentance is the cause of your regeneration. What did they teach you about the assurance of your salvation? Nothing. They were Nothing. not teaching that. No, uh, again, you know, from the... So from the church, I got up the stories from the Bible, but at home I was taught more, you know, true theology, to put it this way. Right, right. You know? So, so people I, I in the church... Like, I wasn't always agreeing with the things that they were teaching, yeah. you know, the way how we are saved, you know, because I knew the examples and I saw the examples at home. Good. So, so <laughs> most people who were with you in that church... Did anybody ever discuss, like, if you guys are out for, if people are out for coffee, like, hey, um, are we truly saved and are we always saved? They never discuss that? Rarely. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Rarely. Really rarely. Wow. Honestly. Wow. Wow. And wow. The methods. The methods. They speak about the methods. <laughs> but also, there are churches that don't speak about sin as well. Of course. And yeah. so, people cannot discuss about, like, repentance. They don't know that we are sinners, first of all. Absolutely. And so it, it's not going, you know. We can have like a scripture somewhere and, you know, the preacher, the guy will explain or will go around it, you know, and telling their stories. Sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes guys are trying to do their best, you know, to present God's word. But it's not something that is taught, you know, that people will be, thought about the sin and that we need God, mm -hmm. that we need to be in relationship with gotcha. him. Gotcha. Okay. So, right. What about you now? So you deal a lot with uh, you and Dayon um, with uh, the social media and, um, you know, things are posted, whether it's my teaching, your teachings, this podcast, mm -hmm. things we write and all that. And obviously you uh, get a lot of interaction mm -hmm. from people. Uh, my understanding is not just here in Zagreb, but throughout yeah. the Balkans, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. We, we watch everywhere in Macedonia, in Serbia, Croatia, some uh, even from uh, Montenegro. Wow, that's and, uh, great. So these are people that are, 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 are uh, interacting with the teachings that come from here, right? Yes. From us, okay. Yes. And let me ask you, when it comes to this topic mm -hmm. of the assurance of salvation, do you, is this a hot topic uh, in the, with the people you deal with? Well, yes. For, for when we started the first time this, uh, actually we were attacked as heretics because we teach this. That we teach that it's, it's not arrogant it's not to arrogant. be assured of your salvation. Of course. Uh, well, uh, they think you choose to be saved and therefore you choose to stay saved. So... There is, like, how can you be assured in you? They don't even think of, about uh, these things. And when we started, it's, uh, uh, this is here new, actually. It's new because many people, they, they, first time they, they, they're hearing that, they're saying, uh, if you do the, some, some groups of people say, uh -huh, if you keep the commandments, you are saved. Seven day Adventists, for example, if you worship in, uh, in, a, in a Sabbath, then you are saved. So that's the, the, the sign. 
But they forget, I'm saying all that you're forgetting the first commandments. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make idols. Uh, love me and also the, 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 the most important uh, commandment. Love me with all your heart, with all your mind. So, yeah. who is doing that? Right. So, it's easy to don't work in Sabbath, but let work, uh, let love God. Yeah. Uh, uh, constantly 24 hours with all our minds, with all our hearts, and to, to don't make idols. Uh, well, I can say it's arrogant. Actually, those people are arrogant because they think they, they have assurance if they keep the commandment. So their assurance is in themselves. Selves. Yes. Rather and than in the grace of God. And that's is arrogant. That's arrogant. That's arrogant. So to be able to say, well, let's think of the, the whole the whole thing from beginning. We would agree that it's arrogant to say that you choose God. Yes. That God is waiting yes. upon you. That God is, you know, uh, Jesus is standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking and knocking, but he can't get in because there's not a doorknob for him to get in. You, on the inside of your heart, have the doorknob. You control. And Jesus is kind of like this poor guy saying, please, 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 I want to save you. I want to save you, but I can't yeah. unless you open the door. Well, That's a bit was, arrogant, right? Yes. While I was in God. Macedonia, we, I spoke with family friends of ours. And we had this kind of topic, you know, conversation about the salvation. And the lady was afraid that she may lose her salvation, you know, if she is not doing well enough. Mm. And, you know, we read scripture, we read also Romans 7, you know, how Paul was dealing also. Like, uh, we struggle in this world and it's not easy, but, you know, we can have joy in the salvation because we are saved. And people forget that. You know, to have the joy in that. And, of course, we will sin, but God paid all the sins. And that does not approve us, you know, to do whatever we want. You know, we still need to strive, you know, and be obedient and be more Christ-like. Out of gratitude, Out of gratitude for the yes. gift of but salvation. But not, not to please God in a sense, you know, okay, now I will do this, but you will save me because of those things Correct. that I'm doing. Uh, go to John chapter 10. Um, again... Obviously, we believe it is arrogant to say that, well, you know, I choose Jesus. And it's also arrogant to say, well, my uh, salvation is assured because I have the ability to persevere on, pers my, own. on my own. Right. So we, we would say that's arrogant. But uh, look at John 10. Jesus makes this very interesting statement in verses twenty. And starting in verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep, by the way, who are his sheep, just hop over to verse 14. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, I know the Father. I lay down my life for the, the, sheep. the sheep, the elect, mm -hmm. right? So back to verse 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. Why? Because they are regenerated by God the Holy Spirit, right? Given the gift of faith Ability. to be able to hear Jesus' voice. How do we hear Jesus' voice? Word. Right there. Yes. That's it, right? Jesus speaks by his Spirit, right? Through the Word. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life. So... That pretty much breaks the idea that you can choose Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. He says, I give. And who does he give his, the eternal life to? To his, to? his sheep. His sheep. Mm -hmm. And then look what Jesus says about the assurance of salvation. I give eternal life to them, verse 28, and they shall never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. Uh, Greek scholars that you are now, okay? Uh, when Jesus says no one, it's, 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 it's a double emphatic, which literally means you, no one can take you out of Jesus' hand, right? Mm -hmm. Those who are saved are secure in Christ, right? And he says no one, can take you out of Jesus' hand. 
right? So that's the one side of the no one. The other side is you can't even cause yourself to lose your salvation. Make sense? He says, no one can take them out of my hand. Why? Verse 29, my father who has given them to me. Who is the father given to Jesus? His sheep. His sheep. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. I and the father are one. That's interesting. So the elect, the sheep, are not only held by Jesus, <laughs> they are held by God the, father. God the Father, and obviously God the Holy Spirit lives in you, has sealed you. So you've got the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, <laughs> securing your salvation. I don't know, is it arrogant to be assured of your salvation? We are, we, we are secured in God. There it is. In there God. it is. In God. There it is. Your assurance is not because of you, no. as though you or I have the ability to persevere through our own efforts, our own strength, our own wisdom, our own drive and desire. Why can't we be assured in ourselves, even as saved people? Why? There it is. Our sinful nature is, is struggling and... Uh, if you're honest, we are, we are, we are failing sometimes. But uh, our sec secure, as you said, is because that we are elect and the elect are justified. God justified us. Justified, theological term, two sides, right? God declares you not guilty, right, on one side. The other side, he declares you righteous in his sight. Why? Because of whose righteousness? Because of Jesus. Christ. Christ's Christ. righteousness that has been what? To our account. Uh, credited. Good, credited. 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 What's the theological word? Imputed. 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 Don't say infused. No, 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 no. Okay. Imputed, Imputed. Imputed, right? Credited it to our account, right? Good. So that when God looks at you, well, go to Romans 8 1. Great verse here. There is now no condemnation for everybody? No. For those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because when God the Father looks at the elect, those who have been saved by Christ, right? Redeemed by Christ. When God looks at you, he says there's now no condemnation. Why? He sees Christ, not us. Christ's perfect righteousness has been credited to our account. Christ, remember what he said, the perfect God man, he said, I have come to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, he has fulfilled all the law for us in our place, right? Yes. Because again, we know, how are you saved? By works of grace. Uh, works. Boom. Christ's God's, work. God's, <laughs> there you go, God's right? Work. Because God's what work. is, yeah, what is the covenant? Okay, I think we talked about this last week. We see the covenant of redemption right which was done before the foundation of time within the secret council of the trinity father son and holy spirit made a decision to redeem the sheep that's called the covenant of redemption what's the next covenant i'll give you a hint god made with adam Uh, the first gospel. No, he no, himself. before that. Covenant of? Works. Works, very good. Very good. Remember God had said to Adam, do this and you will what? Live. Live. Don't do this, disobey me and you, you will, die. you will surely die. It was based on a covenant of works. Obedience, right? So you have the covenant of redemption before the foundation of time made between the members of the Trinity, choosing the elect. Mm -hmm. You have the covenant of works given to Adam. How did Adam do with the covenant of works? Bit, very bit. Right. He broke that covenant. And as a result, sin came into the world and the consequence of sin, which is death. Uh, physical, spiritual, eternal, right? What did God do with that covenant? Did he just say, okay, that experiment didn't work? 
he he find a way to save us to redeem us does that covenant still exist yes god didn't just wipe it out so question covenant of redemption covenant of works what covenant came immediately you said it earlier after the covenant of works the redemption covenant of grace yes. covenant of redemption before the foundation of time in the garden god said to adam obey you live disobey you die covenant of works adam disobeyed what god do covenant of grace new covenant there in the no city. not yet new covenant covenant of grace. christ would come and bring in the new covenant right yes good covenant of grace remember where god pronounced the curse on satan and god basically made the promise it was the first gospel what's it called in the greek proto evangelion where god promised that one would come the seed the messiah who would reverse the curse mm -hmm. so you you are saved by works but obviously mm -hmm. none of us can do mm -hmm. and perfectly fulfill the covenant of works right yes, we cannot satisfy god correct through our own efforts so through the coming of the messiah and the fact that jesus first before he was punished for unrighteousness he first what fulfilled, fulfilled all righteousness mm -hmm. why he had to fulfill which covenant the first first covenant of works right mm -hmm. the law yeah. he, he, he said he didn't come to abolish but to fulfill there it is matthew 5 i did not come to abolish the law but to fulfill it why well what did he i mean he's perfect he fulfilled it in whose place for our place our place covenant of works and then he went to the cross after fulfilling all righteousness for us he then went to the cross and was punished for our what unrighteousness right mm -hmm. our sins placed. were placed on him he was punished for whom for us good everybody no for his sheep for what his he baby. said right yes and, and who were the elect which when, 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 when were they chosen before the foundation of what's that covenant called redemption. boom okay right so christ filled all righteousness covenant of works for the elect mm -hmm. Christ went to the cross and was punished for the sins of He's the elect. Good. Christ died. Punishment for sin is death. But three days later, he rose in victory, mm -hmm. overcoming sin and death for whom? For his people. His people, right? Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, I give, my, I give eternal life to my sheep. Right? Mm -hmm. And so... You're saved by grace. But grace encompasses both covenants, right? Actually, all three covenants. <laughs> Redemption works grace, right? Because that which Christ, the work Christ did in fulfilling all righteousness and fully paying for our unrighteousness, we are saved based on Christ's righteousness that's the righteousness imputed to us so when we are justified in God's sight that's why I said there's two sides right mm -hmm. the first side is when God declares you not guilty wait a second that means you've perfectly fulfilled all of God's laws me no me yeah as David no Christ did boom mm -hmm. you see his works do you see it uh, when God declares the other side righteous in his sight, why? Christ. Yeah. Fully paid for your sins. His, entire, his full, perfect, holy righteousness has been credited to your account, right? So when God sees us now, he sees... That's why God can say there is now no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And isn't this interesting? Right before Paul had said that incredible statement, what did he say a few verses above? Verse 24. Wretched man that I am. 
He's right. <laughs> right. And why was he saying that? Remember Romans 7? You know, I know what the law is. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I don't do it. Those things I don't want to do. I know and all that stuff. Right? And look what Paul says. Wretched man that I am. Right? And then he yeah. says, who will set me free from this body of death? In other words, I've got this wretched sin nature in me. This is the great apostle Paul. He was honest. <laughs> What's the answer? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, chapter 8, verse 1, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set you free from the law of sin and death, right? Yeah. So again, I love to ask this question all the time. Like, you know, how are you saved? By works? Oh, grace, grace, grace. Ah, wait a second. Yes. What happened to the covenant of works? Well, Christ earned that grace. Fulfilled, yeah. Through, through, through his works, through That's his it. life. So we are saved, as you said earlier, by whose works? Christ's works. Christ's Christ works. works. We are considered not guilty in God's sight because of whose righteousness? Christ. Christ. And so here's my question. That perfect righteousness that has been imputed or credited to our account. Well, what happens? You got to hold on to it, or God's going to take it away, and you'll lose your salvation. No. He, uh, oh, wait a second. You, you're going to contaminate that perfect righteousness that's been credited to your account, as you correctly said. It's not that we want to sin as believers. It's not that God condones sin. Right? Sin has this consequence for believers here on earth. But it doesn't cause you to lose your salvation if you're truly a born-again believer. If Christ's righteousness has been credited to your account, what's God going to do? Uh, no. Nah. You know what, Yosef? I'm taking that away from you. <laughs> oh, no, 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 David. No, nah, you messed it up. You see it, David? Gone. Is that what Christ is going to do? No. Then his no. works are in vain. Boom. It's, it's like... No need for works. <laughs> Not just his <laughs> works are in vain. The words well, he said are in vain. Well, Jesus said, I give eternal life. Yeah. So then he was joking. Right. And he said, no <laughs> one can take it. And all of a sudden it's like, well, nah. nah de the devil took this righteous. I, I can't have it. And what? Actually, actually if, if God or Jesus do that, he goes against himself. And then the devil is... Then he's not God. He's not God. He's, he's, he's weak. And the devil, like, uh, he, wants, he wants to, to snatch because knows the only thing which, um, there's one verse, the devil is, is, is a ro Pro, roaming like a... a yeah, and he wants even from the... First Peter 5. But he cannot. A question. Um, can God do everything? No. No. He can't sin. He cannot sin. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the people on the podcast go, what in the world is the answer teaching them over there? <laughs> Very good. God cannot... No. Do sin. everything. Cannot can't sin. lie. Can't sin. No. Can't change. He cannot kill himself. Can't kill himself so far. We can go on and on. Very good. But so God is what's the theological word? God is unchangeable. Do you guys know that one? Immutable. 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 Very good. God is immutable. immutable. Meaning, okay, what he says here cannot change. Mm. Right? He's a word. Yeah. It can't change. So, is it arrogant as a true born-again believer? Based mm -hmm. upon the works of Christ, based upon the word of God, is it arrogant to be assured, certain of your the security of your salvation? No, it's not. It's not. In no. fact, it is arrogant to not believe it as a believer. Mm -hmm. Deny, we say, when we die, when we deny, we say that he is not a good shepherd. There you go. Do you see it? He's not caring. He's saying, I'm giving my life. If he gives his life, if he makes such a big sacrifice, of course, he will keep us. He, he, he make, and uh, Paul in, in Timothy, he's saying, I know in whom I trust. We know in whom we trust. We don't trust in ourselves. We don't trust in ourselves. We know we trust in God. So, so to trust in ourselves is, for the assurance of our salvation is arrogance, like we said earlier, right? Yes. In ourselves, yes. 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 But to yes. trust in God? 
It's based true. upon the works of Christ, based upon the words of Christ. Is that arrogant? No. It's well, we give glory to God. Then. It, we, we became arrogant like knowing that if we proclaim that we are saved and not doing what he says. Then you know, that's safe. that's the better then question. Saved. Well, that's the better question that people should ask themselves, you know. If I'm declaring that I'm safe, you know, do I do what my master says? Very do good. I do I do I follow up with his word? Do 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 I live according to his word? Again, do I do my best, you know, not to, you know, to because of me, but to please God for who he is, out of gratitude. As out said of before. gratitude. It was funny, yesterday uh, on the Romy podcast, uh, Vid, one of our Romy leaders, uh, we were talking about, um, uh, as believers, are we servants of Christ? And he goes, no, we're slaves of Christ. <laughs> Dulos. Absolutely. Dulos. It, yes. it means slave. Yes. We are slaves of Christ. Both. Both slaves. That's right. We were before slaves to devil, to, to sin, and now we are redeemed. And in, there you go. In the, when Christ sets you free, you're what? Indeed. Free, free indeed. Free, but indeed. guess what? He just set you free from being enslaved to your sin nature, sin, self, and sin. Change the master. There you go. <laughs> but you're still a slave. You just have a good, perfect awesome master right who is who is worthy of, of, of serving again go back to John 10 what we read earlier when Jesus said right you know uh, you know I give eternal life to my sheep he said no one can snatch my sheep out of my hand or my father's hand right mm -hmm. that's great but notice what Jesus said in verse 27 my sheep hear my voice. Mm -hmm. I know them. And they what? Fall. Boom. Boom. What does They're that mean? Signed. Yes. What does that mean? What you were saying earlier. That true believers will follow God's voice. And what is God's voice? God's word. Mm -hmm. His word yes. Which desire. reveals God's will. There it is. We'll have a desire to, to read God's word because we see His love. We see, we see all, all the Bible is promise all the bible fulfills who who god is we want to um to to understand better who is god right we see god's love but what else do we see god's holiness holiness god's majesty you know you know we 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 bow down to him we revere him and we work out our salvation philippians 2 12 mm -hmm. not work for our salvation yeah, work not. out our salvation how through obedience right fear and trembling right okay so, let's do this. Covenant of redemption, right? Done when? Before? The foundation the foundation of, time. of time. Between? God and the, the Trinity. 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 Right? Good. Covenant of works. God made between? Adam and Adam. Right. Man, right? Man. Adam, who, who represented humanity, yeah. right? Okay. Covenant of grace. God, through the Messiah, would bring salvation mm -hmm. to the elect, right? Okay. So, those who are the elect... Those whom Christ has, the, the righteousness of Christ has been credited to their account, right? Based upon the works of Christ, the Holy Spirit regenerates, right? Makes alive. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit also lives in that believer, right? Mm -hmm. Seals, indwells that believer. Question. Holy Spirit, who inspired the Holy Scriptures. Mm -hmm. What is he going to lead a believer to do? Is he going to lead you to holiness or sinfulness? Holiness. To, to obey the word of to God. Obey the way. Right? Yeah. Won't, won't go against himself. Exactly. Himself, exactly. The Holy Spirit, who inspired the Holy Scriptures, will not lead you to disobey the word, to ignore the word, to devalue the word, to not read the word. What? Now, doesn't mean we don't struggle. We still have a sin nature. But we're not uh, in that state. Exactly. We cannot be. And, exactly. and we are, even we, we feel um, our conscience is, is working. We are grieved. We, we, we desire that, that living water that Jesus is saying. Of course. Come to me, I will give you living water. It's we a, won't stay in desert. A sad reality today that people listen more to what the preachers are saying and not focusing on the word. And they're not taught, you know, people in many 
let's say, denominations, Christian groups, you know, to, to learn the word. And honestly, I think it's more responsibility of those who are in that position, Very as good. teachers and Very good. pastors, than of those people. 100% you know, right, Because David. people want to follow leaders and what kind of example of leaders we are. There you, you know, go. Because preaching something, you know, they can teach about tradition, they can teach about stuff from the Bible, but they misinterpreted it. There you go. That's a great point. Look, you guys, you know, are preparing. You're going to be graduating seminary, and you guys get a ton of training here. And, you know, look, um, I'm hoping, but again, I'm not God, but I'm hoping that God has truly called you men to be ordained pastors. Again, it's a calling, right? We know that. I can't, I can prepare you outwardly, but I can't give you that inward epithumeo from the Holy Spirit desire, right? Well, if in fact you guys are going to be pastors, as you correctly said, you are modeling before the people that which you truly love. <laughs> If you're constantly talking about yourself in your sermons, what are you modeling? Who do you truly love? Our, our ego ourselves. Right. And what are the people in the congregation who truly love? Who? Well, <laughs> Them. themselves. Right. If you are, as a pastor, modeling your love for God's word, because in it, you see God, mm. you hear God, and you learn the will of God. Mm. If you're modeling that constantly, love of God through God's word, what kind of response, what kind of, uh, uh, what, what are the people in the congregation going to start to love? Jesus, God, they will... Uh Revere him. Jesus will increase and will do decrease. Again, guys, I cannot emphasize this enough to you. You will always model that which you love. Mm. What is inside comes out. There it is. And so, you know, if you're constantly, when you're preaching, if you're just hovering above or around the Bible, not taking your people deep into the Bible, if you're just hovering, what do you think they're going to do? Same. In their private time, same mm -hmm. thing. If even that, because the late John Stott said, the pew rarely, if ever, rises above the level of the pulpit. And he said, if there's a mist in the pulpit, there's going to be a fog in the pews. Mm. You want to present Christ. I mean, that's why, again, our Lord's Day services, whether here in Zagreb, our Romies, there in South Florida, what do we do? We're going through the Gospels. We're going through all four Gospels. We're doing the harmony of the Gospels. Why? I get to preach Christ every Lord's Day. <laughs> it's going to be for the rest of my life. I get to lift up Christ before you every Lord's Day mm. for the rest of my life. You get to see Christ. Well, guess what? What am I modeling for you? To exalt Jesus. There it is. And in that way, we, we are conformed in the image. There it is. If we, if we, if we don't see his word, and if we, the word don't develop in us, we won't. And look at the we hunger you guys have for Christ and his word. I don't have to tell you, hey, are you reading your Bible? I don't have to tell you, hey, come on, <laughs> make sure you're preparing for the kid. No, you guys, you guys are uh, you're doing it. I mean, day on yesterday when we drove to and, and, and back from the villages, I mean, we had such a great time yesterday just talking about Christ. Yes. Wasn't it great? Yes, yes, the old way to, towards Zagreb, yes. The whole time we're talking about Christ. While you were tired, young man, we were just 
exactly. having a blast with Christ. It was great. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like I had to, you know, okay, I got to try to have a conversation. What am I going to talk to Dayon about? Boom, let's talk Christ. <laughs> Dayon, the same thing, right? Same thing when you're preaching. Man, you never have to sit there on a Monday or Tuesday and go, oh, what am I going to preach this weekend? <laughs> What do you mean, what are you going to preach? I need to come up with something. Come up with what? (laughs) Right here. Right? And the more you take your people deep, deeper in the word of God, they will automatically rise in their exaltation and worship of God. And one of the ways they will exalt God and praise God And be humble before God is because they understand. Mm -hmm. They've been saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and that their salvation is secure. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, if you can go in Romans, we can read um, uh, Romans 8, verse 29 and 30. Yep. Romans 8, 29. For those, by the way, I was going to say, come on, enough of the Bible. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, what okay, else? And what else? There you go. Good. Let me, we, let's hear. we are hungry. There you go. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Why? To become conformed to the image of his son. So to that make you he, like Christ. So that he will be the firstborn among many brethren. And this whom he predestined, he also called. And this whom he called, he also justified. And this whom he justified, he also glorified. Uh, well, tell me something. What's, what's the tense in the Greek? It's uh, con, uh, continuous? No, aorist, aorist, aorist. Aorist it's tense, in, which means it is a fact, a done deal. Uh, finished, finished. Th- finished that can, has continuous con- consequences. So when he says, those who have been predestined, when did that happen? Before the foundation of time. Before the foundation of time. Mm-hmm. Okay. He also called. Oh. That is the... Okay. In- Regeneration. Very good. Spirit. The call of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. The regeneration. Yes. When did that happen? Sometime here on earth, right? Yes. When mm-hmm. you were regenerated, saved. Um, he justified. God mm-hmm. justifies, declares not guilty and righteous based upon the righteousness of Christ. Those who have been predestined and regenerated, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And God also what? Those who are justified, God also what? Glorified. And glorified. That will, it's like saying, um, us is done. Exactly. Us is, us is done. In God's eyes, so we have assurance. There it is. In God's eyes, it's what? It's done. You're you're gonna be the gl- you're going to glory. Yes. It's a done deal. This is the best verse about assurance. Right. Again, by the way, does it have anything to do with you, David, in here? Does it say anything? Let's see. Let's look at the pronouns. Um, again, he, let's... He, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, again, he, verse 29. He. For those whom he foreknew, <laughs> he predestined to become conformer to, conform to the image of his son, mm. so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. Those whom he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. glorified. Any bragging? No, we no. can say only thank you, God. <laughs> and, and this process, all, all of this process is conforming an image of uh, Christ. So, you will become, you'll be conformed to the image of Christ as the Holy Spirit of God takes the Word of God and conforms you into the image and likeness of the Son of God, to the glory of God. Um, will the Holy Spirit use pain and suffering? Yes. Will the Holy Spirit use the Word? Yes. Will the Holy Spirit use difficult people, difficult circumstances? Yes. Will the Holy Spirit even use your sin Yes. to make you like Christ? Not that the Holy Spirit, as you said, wants you to sin, right? To, to, um, to grow us. He will use all of that to make you like Christ. Yes. Why? What does verse 28 say right above verse 29 and 30? To be Christ-like. Yes. What does 28 say? Read it. Whom he... And we know that God causes all things to work together. All things to work for what? Good. What's God's greatest good for you? To become like? His son. Boom. And who does God work all that good for? For the elect. For to his those sheep. who God love. Who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. And what is his purpose? Verse 29. Me? Yeah. For those 
whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become comfort to the image of his son. Boom. And God will work all things out to make you like Christ so that on that day, mm. you will be in the image and likeness of Christ. You won't be Christ, but you'll be in the image and likeness of Christ. And is it guaranteed that your salvation is assured? Again, David, please read verse 30. And those who he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. They will be glorified? He's done. They are. Yeah. In God's eyes. How great is that? Amen Thank you, God. That. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, God. And so we should be proud and humble in the same time, you know, that salvation. Proud that we are saved, but humble. Not based on us. Not based on us, but humble to walk our Christian life here on earth. You know, again, be obedient to him. I think the balance, like Paul said in Romans 7, wretched man that I am. Mm. <laughs> the other side. Yeah. Who's going to save me from this wretched one? Praise be to God through Christ. Right? You see the balance? There's your balance right there. It, 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 all the focus is to, to Christ. Everything which is good is of, in us is from him. From us is the wretched, the word wretched. So that, that, that needs to make us humble. Humble. But, and uh, uh, very are, thankful. And very what? Thankful. Thankful. All Thankful. eternity. There it is. And that should cause us to want to continue to praise Him. Mm, worship. Want to obey Him. Submit to Him. Mm. Love Him the way He desires to be loved. Right? Mm. Suffer for Him. Constantly mm. come and repent to Him. Not to repent constantly to try for your salvation. No. To repent to make sure that you have nothing that's in you, that, 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 is, that is in any way going to create any sort of um, um, uh, hindrance to this relationship with Christ that you want to grow and love him, mm. right? Mm. That's our spiritual act of worship, right, David? Come pure in front of him and like as his bride to be pure. And we are coming to him to purify us. We are not ourselves purifying. So okay. and we and we, and we have a boldness. We we have confidence in him. When when the bride is when the bride is to the groom, you know, she does not have much choices, you know, to, to go away <laughs> and do whatever she wants. Well, so. Unfortunately, well, modern well, day. You know? Well this yeah, but, yeah, but this, but this marriage is for all like, eternity. There you go. <laughs> this there you go, right? There's no there's no like prenuptial or divorce clause here, right? No, no. Good. All right. Guys, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. <laughs> thank you. And uh very proud of you. And again, praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that He has chosen us for salvation. And he guarantees and assures mm. that which he began, he will, in fact, complete. And as a result, all we can say is, Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.